R. R. You look like you're about to kill somebody. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. You're still connecting to audio. There, is that better? That is it. I wasn't on uh, mute or anything. I just had to enlarge the screen. So what's up, Mr. Galaxy guy? <laughs> Far out. I had my first, uh, say, team of four planetary guardians do a, it's called the hub factor, invite some people into a space where they're gonna use the table and the process as one of the main entry points for building a shared knowledge community. In Yorkton, Saskatchewan, and I watched it in Zoom as it was happening. And I was giving little play-by-plays in the background to, to assist in any way. It was, it was really fun. And it's- How do you get like... that background? <laughs> okay, go down to stop video. Mm -hmm. Your lower left, click on it. And it says choose virtual background. So press stop video. Yeah, th there's a little arrow to the right of it. All right. Press it. It says choose virtual background. Oh. Now press that. Yeah. And then a screen's going to come up, and there you can add. There's a little thing add image. Add image. So go on your computer. You want this specific picture, or you want your own picture? Add image. Uh, I guess I'll put my own. Yeah. So we're the uh, okay. Never mind. That's too. Cool. It's the best thing since sliced bread. Boom. Okay, here we go. All right. Hey, oh, look at us go. I just got off the phone with Morris. <clears throat> and uh, there you go. We're both speaking. <laughs> hey. Right on. You helped me. That's good. Okay, so I just got off the phone with Morris, and talking about stuff. And one of my favorite things is when I come to an understanding with someone where we realize that we're talking the exact same thing, but it's in a different way, you know? Yeah. And uh, see this moon, this drum I just got for my birthday. It's uh, looks like the moon. And as I'm sitting here going like this, the earth and the moon, you know, but I wanted to share a song with you. <clears throat> on this drum i just sang it for morris and uh when him and i were talking it was like I, I it was somehow he was talking it just clicked so many things that i already knew and just the way he was saying it it, it was kind of like bringing all these things of my life together all this talking with tibetan monks and krishnas and satanists and native elders and all this stuff you know and it was just really powerful and because he's talking quantum and all this stuff right i'm getting to this point and i said i kind of feel like we're two shamans sitting on a hill sharing a pipe you know just talking in a good way because i you know and getting i just re needed to reach out to someone today because i was having a, a bad time with feeling a, like not connected to people and things and and uh not wanting to be connected to a lot of people <laughs> and uh anyways it was really good and i sang this song for him and it lifted me right up as soon as i sang it he started like laughing in a good way and putting his hands like me raise your hands in a good way and he said you just help my heart so much you don't even know like just the song and this is my spirit song that came to me in a good way and and I, I'm singing for a few people in my life, but I haven't got to sing it in a while and, and having this new drum and the sound of it. I just wanted to share it with you so that it's a gift from my spirit to yours, you know. <clears throat> and it's, uh, yeah, coming in a good way. When schools go take the point of it all, when schools go take the
Mother's tongue, Winska Skakdin Tapwe Nimito means wake up, listen, walk your talk. You know, it's a strong up song to strong up the mind, strong up the heart, strong up the body, strong up the spirit. And it's like an acknowledgement of each other and the work we're doing. You know, I share that song with you in a good way and acknowledgement and gratitude for your work you're doing, the work you're doing on self and for the people and for the future generations. And uh, I just want to honor you because I did reach out to you first. And then when you were busy, I reached out to Morris because I just instinctively wanted to talk to you today just because of where I was feeling. I, I don't necessarily feel that way now because talking to Morris and singing that song now kind of take some of the stuff off but uh yeah it was a just wanted to share that with you in a good way you know can you tilt your computer up a little bit i just throw your head's going in and out and i just want to see you um i was i mean that's so easy to go into trance and to i mean a spirit song like that doesn't even exist in our culture. You know, like it doesn't, it feels like a door opening to, you know, just a whole other world, right? That the Western mindset just doesn't honor it. And, to, mm. and it's, I think it's there for everybody, but it's, it's certain cultures <laughs> honor it and so get it. And others don't, and it, you know, unless you're, unless you have access to someone who's who's doing it, it's it's like a, a mystery written in books about things which actually might be, you know, just like that. You just you just open my heart to something. I don't even know what, but it, to me, if there's an open transmission, your your spirit speaks in a in a. I don't even know what I. I do feel more uplifted, like you said, and I feel more trust mm -hmm. between us because you're you're sharing something highly meaningful to you, and that's mm -hmm. meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad Morris uh, ha helped you. You know that we need more support from all around, and you know he's a he's, he's an incredible man, and and I think you know you're you're just so good for each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that connection with him and you on that way. It's kind of like big brothers, you know, and I've and been kind of the big brother for so long that I need big brothers, you know. I get lost in that teacher role with my young friends and remember that, you know, sometimes they need to be 
the student again and I need to sit with people who know more than me and, and have lived longer than I have and have more experiences and things because it's not about who knows more or less or anything it's just about you have knowledge that maybe I need to hear and, and things you share with me that maybe I need to add to my journey to make it more you know in line with with why I'm here you know <clears throat> so I thank you for that role you've played in my life you know and I know we bump heads because we're fucking strong people but we're warriors you know and we're not bitches we're not punks you know like we see stuff we stand up to it we hear stuff if we don't agree we say we don't agree and we're not afraid to do that and don't be afraid to disagree with me ever and I you know I, I tell you the same I'll give you that always my honesty and always my truth and I'll always share that in a good way and not attack you but to hey man I'm like I did it to Morris today he's talking about love and love he's like hold on I said, I just got to challenge you on that because I said it isn't about all love. It's about finding the balance between love and fear, not just one side or rejecting the other. If you just finished telling me that emotions are based on love and fear, then our job isn't to choose one over the other, but our job is to find the balance from the two. Because it, we talked about a thing called toxic fear, but that fear is that's taught to us and, and put on us. But fear is a teacher also. Fear will teach you about yourself. Why are you afraid of that thing? What are you afraid of? Those things teach you. Fear is the teacher. And by fearing things, you appreciate things more. So you, it helps with your love. That's the balance. So even he was like, hey, you know, I'm adding that to his thing. So I think we're mutually beneficial in those teachings, those ways. Like, you know, you know stuff, I know stuff, but you can help tighten mine up and maybe I can help tighten yours up. And that's it, you know. I got a lot to tighten up. <laughs> Me too, but I'm no fucking guru on the mountain. I've just recently pulled my head out of my ass. So, you know. <clears throat> How's the uh, the business meetings go? Are, did you have another one yet? No, I had one on the, the last week, and I got another one tomorrow. So they're pretty much going to be every Tuesday and Thursday. No, every... Tuesday and Thursday and then Saturdays in the evenings. So we'll be doing those for the next little while. And then, uh, yeah, just kind of like stuff. I, I think today was a doubt day. I was real doubt myself and really stuff because I was ready to just take Rolling Thunder and give it to Matt and never deal with it again. <laughs> because I can't teach anyone anything in that way, how to be a warrior. You must teach yourself. You must find your own path. You know, and I have no problem supporting fellow warriors, but who am I to teach anything? I'm not here to teach. I'm just here. To, I know what worked for me, and Rolling Thunder is a reflection of all the things that influenced me to become that, but there's so much I haven't put on there that contributed. We don't talk about spirituality because I'm scared to, because everybody gets their things, and, I, you know, when you start hearing Christian this and that, blah, 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 just, you know, so the spiritual thing I haven't shared with anyone, but that's my, you know, the cultural teachings from all over the world and all over time put together. And that's what helped me be who I am. But I can't teach anyone when I'm and on a physical level, because, you know, the four parts of self on a physical level, I'm not walking my talk. I'm a hypocrite. And I'm glaringly, it's glaringly obvious with certain young people who don't smoke and shit. It feels really shitty to be sitting there talking about health while I'm puffing on a fucking smoke and the hypocrisy of that. I don't like it. You know what I mean? But, but, but wait a second. I mean, one's our cigarettes can be grounding, right? I'm going to have smoke while we talk about cigarettes. <laughs> I'll, I'll light up. A... <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like if I went into a gym and said, am I going to I'm going to coach some basketball and, and here I am barely moving. I can't shoot, can't dunk, can't do anything anymore. And you might go to me, you know, how can you teach these kids anything? Yeah. And I might say, you know, there isn't a 13 year old kid on the planet that I couldn't teach something about basketball. Yeah. I mean, it might be embarrassing for me to waddle around the gym, but I mean, it, I think at some point you have to teach from where you're at and realize whoever's coming to you in some sense, they just want, you know, for you to help them out a bit right i mean they're not expecting you to be the model of that purity and they're not expecting you know them to be able to accelerate to where you are at but in that present moment you can give them feedback about how to get a little bit better 
And I think if you keep it in that mind frame rather than, because I hear the same thing from you each time in a sense. And it's mm -hmm. always kind of like, you know. It, yeah, but I've always learned this, and this is a truth I'll hold to, is that, is, is that you know, walking your talk is, is integrity. It is contributing to your honor. And that I can only teach by uh, example, lead by example. You know what I mean? And if other people want to know how I got what I got, where I got gotten, they can ask me. And of course, I can say these are the things that I did, but I can't tell them to do anything. I can't make them want to do it or anything. Even when I know that the reason they're fucked up and frustrated is because they're not doing this thing, but I can't make them do that thing. You know what I mean? Like, no, but, but again, it's, I think so, I think something's just a bit off in terms of of being able to teach people. And the thing is, like, I may be, you know, if somebody doesn't know anything about basketball, I know a lot about basketball. I spent, you know, ten years of my life, two hours a day playing basketball. I played high school, played college. I know something about basketball. <clears throat> so somebody who doesn't know anything about basketball, I know tons. Compared to an NBA coach, I know little. You know, everything's relative. And I think if you, there has to be some sort of confidence that you, as you are, can teach someone else as they are. And, and it may not be, you may sound like the word teaching you don't want to use, but whether it's coaching or whether it's feedback or whether it's just you show up four hours a, a week outside with your swords and you work out and if they want to work out beside you fine if they don't that's fine what intended. that's what i originally had rolling thunder for because i don't know how many times people come wandering by hey what are you doing blah, blah, blah. oh this is what i'm doing you know i'll be here every sunday oh i'm gonna come next sunday and they never come right. you know what I mean? but i just kept training i didn't let it get me down until eventually people started showing up every sunday and that's how it went from there and now i got this facebook group at, that uh I seem to only emphasize the martial more than anything. And that's not what it's fucking supposed to be. Even though it's called an athletic association, I don't want it known that it's a holistic warrior society or it'll get flagged and all that fucking stuff. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. The idea here is to bring out that warrior paradigm and honor it in a good way and not reject it as some patriarchal, masculine, blah, 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 blah. blah. Do you know what I'm saying? The warrior thing. Anyone can be a fucking warrior, man. Don't matter. It's a choice. Yeah, it's a calling. And it's one chosen by the people. You serve the people. You know? And and, and that's kind of what I wanted Rolling Thunder to be. But maybe I just, you know, I wanted Matt maybe to help me streamline things. But, you know, that guy's got so much going on that it's, uh, you know, getting him to, to do that is kind of difficult. Yeah, but I wouldn't... Yeah. I wouldn't um... First, I think giving it up to somebody else is ridiculous. <laughs> the rolling thunder is you in a sense. It, it, there isn't the infrastructure and there isn't whatever that you need to develop to pass it on to someone there. Mm -hmm. So, and to me, you've got five things, right? You've got five priorities. Your, 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 prime, fi your prime priority are the food, is the food situation. Just put that out of the background right now. Because like every time I hear you speaking about you, there's a resistance about the how or the what or the where. Yeah. And that doesn't make sense. Like focus, focus on put like, I, I've spread myself so thin by having major projects and, you know, not focusing on one and taking it all the way. Mm -hmm. And I think that anything other than your food focus right now is, is taking you off course. If it's not really, it doesn't sound like it's in alignment the way you want it. Mm. And you might need the funding and you might need this, you might need that. But the food thing, it needs your full attention. Yeah, true enough. And so to, to, to me, you know, just put put a six month break on, on the Rolling Thunder. You, you just place it in an active. You don't have to work on it because there's nothing going, as you say right now, anyway. Just shelve it and just focus on the food. Mm -hmm. See what it's like, just like I tell you, man, when I focus on something, that's when stuff gets done and I get scattered over many projects. If you've got major projects going at the same time, it's right now you're in a point where you're in the school, they got the money, you got to focus for a certain amount of time, you get it set up and then you get to go, okay, now I'm going to do my next thing. Yeah. No, I hear what you're saying and you're right. 
my my addendum would be rolling fender is a way of life it's not something i put aside being active on facebook and my participation that's something i could put aside but the warrior training i do for myself i always have to be thinking of the holistic work and the stuff like that but not the group work you're right about that then then move the rolling thunder we had it in the group space move it to personal space yeah that's it yeah 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 and and your fo- your business Mm. move both to community and group you're creating your team and you're doing a service to the community so mm. now take out the rolling thunder that was a problem move to personal space now you're creating your your mother's hands or or the arcanium organization mother's hands could be in the community space arcanium could be your, in your group space mm. and that's how you're segmenting it mm. i wish you could see what i see right now because every time you go like this to a certain side, that tree behind you, the branches look like lightning coming out of your fingers. And you have this amazing space thing on the background. But then you'll suddenly go like this and these spark things will come out. The branches will come out of the background. It looks pretty trippy, man. Like it looks really cool. As you're talking to me with this awesome stuff, which you know, it's, you're right. You're, you're right. And I agree. Mm. The, the, the personal space thing with it and, and continuing what I do in my development putting all my focus, all my eggs in, in this mother's hands basket, because this is what I'm in it for. And this is what I'm going to do. And I'm just kind of like having some doubts with stuff, but just because people, right. And then friends and all that, and the other fucking thing. And, and, and being who I am, people kind of look to me for this and that. And there's sometimes when I'm looking for that and I can't find it from anyone because everyone's too fucked up or too busy or this and that. It's sometimes I just need someone to fucking talk to, man. I just need someone that understands me because I'm fucking sick of talking to people who don't. Got yeah. this new friend, Sam, who's from Iran. He's an amazing human. But that guy doesn't understand me, man. Like, he doesn't get it why I am what I am, right? And so I see him looking at me sometimes in this weird way, and it's kind of like, fuck, man. You know, like, <laughs> if you only knew, but, you know. <laughs> Turn off that eyebrow. It is not doing you well. <laughs> I talked to you, I talked to Morris, I feel, and I told him, and I'll tell you, I feel like I found Ken. And Ken is so fucking rare. It's the highest form of human connection, in my opinion. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, well, outside of parent, parent, child, I'd say Ken, which is technically parent, child, Ken is a special thing. And you and I have been through enough stuff together that that's kind of how I, I see you. you know, I feel you in my heart. And if I felt you only in my mind, you'd be an acquaintance, you know. But I think about you regularly. I try to reach out. Sometimes I just think of funny things. I just want to talk and, and hear your fucking shit, you know? <laughs> you know? Well, it's nice to hear. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's what all humans want, right? We want close connection with people we love. And uh, if we don't have that, things suck. Hey, whoa, I didn't say I loved you. I really <laughs> like you. Yeah, he's up there, hippie Jim. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I did like you, but now yeah, you're exactly. irritating me. And you had to go and say, I love you, brother <laughs> bear. <laughs> Although, like, to me, I think when the, like, the community space, there's that brotherhood of love, sisterhood of love. It's very different from the one-on-one personal love where we get sort of like, okay, what are you talking about, buddy? Or what's going on here? <laughs> As opposed to kind of like that, that um, just feeling friendly towards those people that you're, you want to build that community with, right? At some point you go, these are the people and, and, and you, you, I don't know, I, th- I think we, we become loyal, right? I mean, it's, we're not going to get where we want to go by, by not caring about people. I think. You about to die, what's going on there? The what? You, you look like you're. You know, I'm trying to load my pipe. I'm just like, <laughs> listening to you whilst loading up with a friend. Well, I got the whole spade uh, in my pipe. That's cool. Just the express. Yeah. Well, sometimes I require a lot of concentration for simple motor skills. You know? <laughs> enjoy being a fucking stoner. Anyways, I had this idea. I shot it out to Morris and we were just talking. It came up. And then I said, your name came up in the conversation. So then I thought, well, next time I talk to him, I'll, I'll drop it in his ear and, and, and see what happens. 
You ever been to Ida Gwaii, Elijah? No. Well, Morris has been there in 25 years, and I haven't been there for eight, 10 years. It is a divine place. It is fucking magical. There's a lot of amazing shit going on up there. But we talked about maybe making a trip this summer, us three. You know, hop in the van and we fucking ferry over to Haida Gwaii, you know, fucking we'll cover all the costs. And then once we're there, if there's campgrounds, there's this now, we can figure out, I think, you know, some people up there too. But figuring out where to stay and just stay for a week and explore it and go see Guayanas and stuff, you know, and just be up there because it's fucking powerful, man. It's beautiful space. But, you know, it might be a little thing to look at if you be can willing to consider it anyways. I yeah, you know, that, that sounds good. I just wonder about this whole uh, COVID, COVID psyop. <clears throat> yeah, it'd be up to the Ida when Haida Gwaii is open again. But uh, uh, I'm just thinking it's a late summer or something. We might might know differently. So. Yeah, I just, I don't trust these guys. I mean, this last lockdown to me is like insane. They said a thousand cases a day and it's like, None of their PCR tests work are worth shit. You know, whatever was really about those things. I just know that uh, Haida Gwaii controls their who goes there and who doesn't. They get say, and yes, they take provincial guidance. They do take federal guidance, but they take the elders' guidance. Because you have to remember, people got to remember this, man. When the last three major epidemics or pandemics that happened in North America killed almost every fucking native on this continent and it almost destroyed every single Haida and it killed everyone in Haida Gwaii. There was the only reason there's Haida is because there was some in Vancouver and, and Kitimat and places and they moved back to Haida Gwaii and repopulated it over time. The they all people, died. All died. All these salt spring had people on it gone. Uh, Gabriel is a skeety. All these islands we call, the white people call these islands all had natives living on Smallpox, tuberculosis, Spanish flu. <laughs> so the Haida, you can understand, are very cautious about these kinds of things. And so when they know that self, that has some of them have got sick and all that stuff, they said, no, no one's going back and forth or fuck all. Like they, that's their word. So for them, they won't open it up until their elders say it's okay. And I trust that. Yeah. I mean, I'll trust that 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I have to. Yeah, fucking right. So, yeah, a lot of the First Nations people are a little fucking nervous right now and don't know what to think, don't know what to believe or anything. You know, not just us, but everyone. Yes, because it's more relevant here. You know, <laughs> it's way more fucking relevant here. Well, I, I think, you know, deep down, not trusting the white guys is a, is a good move. <laughs> don't trust the government. Is a good move. Yeah. Well, white guys. I don't know. There's black scientists too, right? Asian scientists and Aaron. Who do you trust? You know. And again, you go to peer review. You know, amongst the scientific community, and you go for things where a majority of scientists across the world agree with that scientific finding. Then that's a truth. Yeah. Because what you know, if you do one thing, you say a truth, and only the other scientists who are also on the take will agree it becomes really obvious right but when a simple finding comes out and is accepted by a majority of the same scientists around the world then it's something to fucking listen to and that's how i gauge my shit i don't gauge it by anything else i gauge it by the people who would know and the majority of them not just a few because that's the thing like there's a few when you talk about the international scientific community if it's only just a few, there's a reason there's a few, because those people haven't been able to convince their fellows of their truth. Doesn't mean their truth's not valid. It just means they haven't quite found it within the scientific system to prove. So the other science are saying, like, we hear you, but we're not ready to commit our reputation to this. But when something does come up that that is the case, then you can't argue with the science of it. Then they're willing to put their reputations on the line. And a majority around the world from universities and institutions, all of them agreeing this is a truth. And to me, that's a fucking truth. I'm going to hold on to that. And I know how to discern the difference between the sellouts and the legitimate doctors and scientists. 
and you do too. So it's just a matter of, I told uh, Morris this and I'll share it with you. An elder told me years ago, <clears throat> every animal medicine has a plus and a negative. A spider has a medicine has a plus and a negative. Spider is the dream weaver, right? It takes visions and teaches you how to put them together and weave them together in a good way. And, and just to kind of like emphasize that, I'm going to show you if you can see this. You see that dream catcher in the middle of my drum? Yeah. The seven pointed star. Right. So the spider weaves webs of illusion as well. And that's the dark side of spider medicine. It can weave webs of illusion that cover our third eye. It can weave webs of illusion to cover our physical eyes. It can weave webs of illusion that disconnect us from others. Right. And so the way to cut through that is you use owl medicine. Owl medicine is the desertion of truth, the finder of wisdoms and, and lost things in that way. So owl is the desertion of the truth. And what the elder told me is owl cuts through the bullshit. And it cuts through webs of illusion. It cuts all those ones from your third eye, your eyes and everything else. And you know, you use that owl feather like a sword, like the larger of the, of the Buddhists, of the Hindus, it cut through illusions, right? And so, <clears throat> I was telling them that for a reason. You're a spider and then owl looking at the negative side of the animal medicine? Yeah, yeah. so plus and negatives, right? The bone is the goods and the bad of every one, right? And <clears throat> owls, owls thing is, is, is pontification. That's its weakness, right? And so the antidote for pontification is mouse medicine, which is humility. Because mouse has to look up to everyone, right? The antithesis is the weakness of mouth is timidness or, or, or cowardice. The answer to cowardice, right, is wolf medicine, right? courage and leadership so all the it just goes on and on from there but you you we pick it up these simple paradigms right but uh, my point about the illusions right and, and 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 how we can cut through those illusions and i think that's an important thing for people like us to know there is a way to cut through illusions and and most importantly making sure you're bringing that owl feather inside cutting through the lies we tell ourselves like i told him you know, how do you know you're stupid if you're stupid, but how do you know you're lying to yourself if you're lying to yourself? And so we need that ability to cut through those webs of illusion on the inside, you know? And just like, I don't know if you're like me, there's some webs I leave alone. They're not bugging me, you know, I have no problem with, you know, and some webs are good. They're keeping out bugs, just things by the doors and the windows, just leave them. They're doing a job. Owl medicine or spider medicine is a is a weaver of 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 visions of of uh, dreams, you know. <clears throat> and just remembering that, you know, that that's its thing, you know, that power. So sharing that in a good way. Thank you. Have they got you making the document? Or have they get do do they give you work to do at home kind of thing? Like each not yet, but there will be that, I'm sure. There's modules. It's all done legit. So I've got my modules now, and it's just a matter of they haven't given us any material in which to study from or anything yet. And I'm a little bit concerned about that because I would like stuff to be reading and reviewing websites or could be visiting. Because right now all I am doing is watching as many vertical farming initiatives and companies around the world. I'm trying to familiarize myself with the technology and, and what companies are doing what where. Some new advancements and, and ones that have been going for a while and seeing how they're going, you know, and checking in and keeping abreast of some new tech from around the world. But I'm kind of doing that as my own research. And I'm hoping once that, you know, at the other stuff, I still have to do that thing. I got to do that. As soon as I get off with you, I'm going to make that email. <clears throat> and and whatnot that thing you had sent me the link for that but uh i need to start learning how to uh, get the arcanium enterprises thing done 
because that's going to be the um, that's the main corporation and, and mother's hands falls under it so if that's already established then i don't have to worry about that you know what i mean arcanium enterprise can just be what it is until i learn how to make it the thing i want it to be right but i'm in the group specifically for mother's hands right so and that's what i want the funding for and i'm pretty excited that it's going to happen and then the commitment wise level you know what that looks like and what it means and stuff like that you know i'd have to see because what i'm looking at is like i told you taking a pre-existing technology like a company that's already specializes in setting these up and uh buying that getting the funding to get the cest system getting the funding to buy the warehouse and permission from say the songies to build on the territory could, so, could i give you a suggestion yeah on your uh on your, what do you call it? Um, on your bar, on your toolbar at the top here. Mm -hmm. Do you have a folder system at all yet? Folder system? No. Do you, do you have like a drop down? Uh, do you have any um, folders up there where you organize uh, your online stuff? No, it just says view and recording and whatever doesn't scroll up or anything when I do it. Okay, but okay, like right, there's a place where your URL is. Oh, yeah, then, okay. I'd have to come out of the thing to do it. No, I guess no. Oh, it doesn't work. I don't know. I don't know. So, okay, so on your browser, mm -hmm. you have a place where you can put file folders. Yeah. And so usually you right click on that and it says new folder. File Explorer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it says new folder. So if you right click, you can say add folder. Okay. So you see that? So then expand the current show all folders. Desktop downloads documents. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm not good at this shit. So that's okay. Open new window, change file, search help, close. And property uh, show file explorer. Yeah, I can't. I can't find that. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to show you on mine. Okay. Okay. And do you got a pen and paper for a sec? Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have that available without digging around, so I'll just do it this way. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Do you see that school? See how these words right here? Yeah. Okay. I want you to recreate that on your computer. So instead of school of conscious at the top, put okay. arcanium. Okay. And then write down 3.0 communication, 3.1 research, 3.2 infrastructure, 3.3 learning. 3.4 operations, 3.5 creativity, 3.6 synergy. Am I going too quick? Uh, no, I'm just, I have to write this all down? Yeah. Okay, because I actually have a big marker and a little piece of paper. <laughs> That's all I could find quickly at hand. So just give me a sec there, bud. So Arcanium. Can you just send me a screenshot of that? Because I can't, this thing's writing and it's huge. Yep. I don't have a pen that's nearby. And I'll figure that but out. You, but you, under, you understand sort of what I'm going at there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there, this just came to me, I think probably one of the most important things you're going to be looking at right now or for you to do what you're doing is the equipment costs. Yeah. So finding it like you you sent me that thing of the one company that comes in and does the whole thing like that's perfect right yeah so i would ask them for an estimate maybe they got like maybe they were got that on their site but to start to collect sort of estimates for equipment costs mm -hmm. that's going to be at the base of your business plan for your costs then you got to look at your labor but the thing you got to learn right now is just okay what equipment are we going to use to build what right 
to grow yeah. it. And if yeah. you do the vertical farm, somebody figured it out. Like some, like all, all, like of all the videos you've been seeing, send a message to the people who's in it and say, I'm doing this. Can you help me out? Is there any info? Can you send me stuff? Mm. What you're doing, I would just get a three ring binder and like one of those black three ring page holes. Yeah. And then the same thing that you're doing of these, these, uh, the communication research infrastructure learning, mm. you're going to create file full, like a, a tab. Like mm -hmm. go to the store staples and get like a 10, a 10 tabs, mm -hmm. three hole, three ring binder, and then a three ring punch. Yeah. And then you're going to recreate the file folder system on your computer and you're going to recreate it in this manual. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different from theirs, but you're going to sort of make a business plan with their way and a business plan with my way. Yep. And you'll kind of like, you'll see the difference as it goes. Yeah. But I, as long as we just... You're, the main thing you're building right now is your business plan. Yeah. And so you're you're all right now, all you don't even, I wouldn't rely on these guys. I would say they're going to sort of like do a little bit, yeah. but you're essentially doing all of it. And, yeah. and you want to be hyped about that. You're hyped about, I'm building the business plan. I'm a smart guy. I'm going to figure it out. And all you have to do is get all the information necessary in that binder. And then online, you're just, you're creating both. Do you have a printer? No. <clears throat> um, I was literally thinking about it today, though. I was uh, this morning. I would like print the most important stuff that you find, and yeah. then you pop it in your binder. Okay. Yeah. And so our the reference point is everything I've got is basically a set of file folder things. Yeah. And and it's just creating a common language between us, common language in your mind, common mm -hmm. language with the maps, and then once you've done it for this business. You just change the idea and you use the same tabs and you just figure out all the pieces and then you hand it. So you're, you're basically creating methodologies to franchise each business that you're coming up with. And what I've got is a franchise system kind of sense. Yeah. Okay. So we can just do it in steps at a time. Mm -hmm. And then once you got this done and that, then like the next step is once that's done, other, there's a bunch of other maps I can give you, but you need to create the container first. Yeah. So do you agree to go get that done? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. I might even have one here in a donation pile. I can pull the binder out and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I'll get, uh, I'll get a thing of those binder liner note things and some binder papers. Yeah. Go, you know, da, da, da. yeah. Just send me a screenshot of that thing or something. It'd be so much easier if you were here because that's kind of how I learned is if someone's right here to kind of like, walk me through it then after that i can do it on my own but it's just hard to do over this because i don't you know what i mean this like is, this is the best we got and it's actually pretty good yeah it's just gonna take you me just got to adapt yeah that's it that's true that's my rule number this is, two, this right? is the, what you want to be able to do is run your business from your laptop anywhere so you can travel pop in your car disappear but you're running everything from this laptop yeah okay i see in tab i don't know in tab. okay Okay. Okay. I'll send that to you in Facebook. And, uh, and then as soon as you get that done, how about, yeah, then we'll have another chat. Yeah, man. Okay. 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 Peace. Great to see you.